Welcome to the Crystal Ray Network College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Jessica and I'll be your facilitator. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items. Just know that your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type questions to your presenters at any time. This is just one of the many different sessions happening now and in the future, so make sure you check back on the website to sign up for more. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com forward slash Christo dash Ray. Now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter, DePaul University. Hello, everyone. Let me go ahead and share my screen really quick. Okay. So uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Jocelyn Valdez. I am one of the admission counselors here at DePaul University. I work specifically with students from the state of Wisconsin and then some local northern suburbs and then some local Chicago schools. So if I am your admission counselor, you know, I hope we're able to connect fairly, fairly soon. I'm going to go ahead and get started and to introduce you guys to DePaul University. I want to start off with some fun facts. We were actually founded back in 1898. And I always like to mention that our first class that we had um, was about 20 students, um, which is very small compared to where we are today. Today, we have about 23,000 students with 15,000 of those being undergraduate students. Um, and even then, we love to still provide small classroom sizes for our students. So, our average classroom size is going to be around 22 students. Average student faculty ratio is going to be about 15 to 1. And 98% of our classes are taught by professors. So it's going to be very rare that you're going to have teacher assistants um, or TAs in the classroom. We have um, a very diverse student population on our campus as well. Our students come from all 50 states. They represent over 111 countries. Um, and we actually, it's not listed on here, but we actually do represent over 30 religions on our campus as well. Um, as you guys may know, we are, I apologize for my dogs in the back, but um, as you guys may know, we are the largest Catholic university in the nation. <laughs> um, but again, we do represent those 30 <laughs> religions on our campus. As you guys see on your screen here, we do have over 300 academic programs and they are divided up between 10 colleges. Um, some of our most popular majors, as you see listed on the bottom right-hand side, is going to be film and television, health and science, accounting, psychology, and then computer science. But let me go ahead and go into um, our 10 schools and colleges. So as I mentioned, 300 programs divided in between both of these. Something I'll go a little bit later on through the presentation is the fact that we do have two campuses. The first three schools that you see listed on here, the College of Business, Communication, Computing, and Digital Media, and the college all the way at the bottom, our College of Law, those are going to be in our Loop campus. Everything else is going to be in our Lincoln Park campus. Um, what's really great is that while because we are in the quarter system, which I don't think a lot of people know, um, a normal high school education, you have two semesters per academic year. Here at DePaul, you'll do three quarters per academic year. Um, so longevity wise, you will have more classes to take at the end of the four years, but that does provide you a lot of flexibility in your schedule. So a lot of our students will go ahead and double major. Um, if you don't have a chance to double major because the curriculum of your major is a little bit too intense, um, then our students do tend to triple minor because we give you a lot of options to do that as well. Um, within these colleges, um, each college is going to have their own set of um, academic advisors and career advisors because we want everyone to have a good dedicated team to get them jump started on their careers. Um, and then we have a lot of honors programs as well. We have a, a wide um, university honors program that not only elevates your curriculum, but also provides you with one on one mentorship with advising. Um, you get additional scholarship opportunities. Um, and then we have other um, college specific honors programs such as the Pathway Honors Program, which is a fast track to medical school here in Chicago. Um, we have our Accountancy Honors Program. And then we also do have a really great BA, JD, 3 plus 3 program for anyone who's looking to become a lawyer. So if you have any more questions about that, let me know. 
Um, again, like I mentioned, we have two campuses. Our main campus is going to be Lincoln Park. That's going to be in Lincoln Park um, in Chicago. That's the more traditional college campus. So you'll have like the traditional beautiful library, the quad, um, the traditional residence halls. But we also do have the Loop campus. So that's going to be more hustle and bustle in the city, not too far away from Millennium Park. Um, these are dual campuses, so you don't have to feel like you have to apply to one or apply to the other. Our students are welcome to go back and forth since their dual campuses they find you'll find um, things on both of them both of both campuses will have housing a library dining laundry clubs financial aid offices uh, student resources offices they'll have it all what's really great is that we provide all of our students with a venture you pass so that allows you to go back and forth between campuses um, however much you want or to just explore all of Chicago um, so you don't ever have to live on campus, but about 71 to 73% of our students do live on campus um, their freshman year. They tend to stay for about two years, but then they move off of campus because since you're in Chicago, housing is gonna be very much available to you guys. And what is there to do on campus? A lot with over 22,000 students, we have a lot for you to do. Um, this includes anything from 350 student clubs. We have anything from like acapella groups, theater groups, um, Dungeons and Dragons, fashion, sports, cloud. We have it all. Um, we have a lot of service opportunities because of our Vincentian values. We always ask what must be done, not just for ourselves, but also for our community. So we love when students volunteer. Um, we work with over 20 Chicago service sites. Um, and we actually have a whole dedicated Vincentian service day. So. Our students will all tag team and go volunteer on the same day. It's a really nice special day for us to give back to our community. Um, we have campus recreation. We have this beautiful facility where students can go ahead and work out. Um, we are the DePaul Blue Demons, so we are part of the East Conference Division One. Um, if you're not, um, if you don't want to play Division One, we also also do have club level sports. And then if you're someone like me who likes to play more for fun, we do have intramurals as well. And then last but not least, we do have our music and theater schools. They actually put on over 100 productions a year and they are super popular. They sell out right away. So I would always just recommend for students to get involved with that or go to it as well. And part of living in Chicago is just the fact that because you go to DePaul, Chicago is your backyard and we are the third largest city in the US. We have 26 beautiful miles of the lakefront, seven professional sports. So there's a lot for students to do on our campus and even off of our campus. We have this really great program called Chicago Quarter Course. It allows you to explore or discover a part of Chicago that maybe you are already familiar with and you just want to keep um, getting to know that part. Maybe you want to discover new areas of Chicago. Um, so We'll take you around some of these topic areas. Um, and I find that a lot of freshmen find that very beneficial. Um, so if you're interested and you do want to apply, um, our application is totally free. It is on the common application. You really only need two things to apply to DePaul. Um, one of them is gonna be your um, application and then your transcripts. After that, everything else is optional. I know it says submit test scores, but we've actually been test score optional for about 10 years now. Um, so as someone who will review your application, I can tell you, I will never wonder why a student does not submit a test score. Um, we have a couple application deadlines, as you guys can see listed on here. I would always recommend for the students to uh, um, apply early action. Um, not only do you get priority um, application review, you also do get priority scholarship consideration. Um, most of our students who get admitted to receive a merit scholarship. Um, and we also do have like, a really great Catholic heritage scholarship for anyone who graduates from a Catholic high school in the local area of Chicago and then meet certain GPA requirements. So definitely something a lot of you students will probably be eligible for. Um, for early action applicants, we also do send out additional scholarships you can apply for post being admitted. And then we also give like other caveats as well. Um, so I'm actually very proud of myself that I was able to stay within the time limit. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put my information in the chat as well as our scholarship page link and then our visit options because we are holding in-person visits. So hopefully you guys stop by soon. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. 
So next up, we have Lawrence Technological University. Thank you so much. I'll go ahead and share my screen now. All right, so I am Sean McNiff. I'm an admissions counselor here at Lawrence Technological University and where I'm responsible for recruiting is gonna be Southwest Michigan as well as the state of Ohio. So a little background about Lawrence Tech. Lawrence Tech was originally founded in 1932 as Lawrence Institute of Technology. And we were actually founded by George and Russell Lawrence. <laughs> uh, we were founded in the building that was originally leased from Henry Ford and it was adjacent to the Model T assembly plant. You can kind of see it circled right there. Kind of the idea was for people that were working on the line to further their education at night, that way they can take that knowledge and reapply it back to the car. We kind of call that theory and practice and we still use that to this day. Uh, theory and practice is essentially taking what you're learning in the classroom and putting it into real world situations. So some of the ways that you can do that at Lawrence Tech would be through senior projects and quest projects. We also have team projects such as our Blue Devil Motorsports. Uh, the Blue Devil Motorsports is where you build race and design motorized vehicles from the ground up essentially. Uh, it's a lot of hands-on work that's involved with it. And it's not just for engineering students. Uh, it's also going to be for, say, business students for the marketing and advertising. Uh, same thing with architecture students for the design. So it's a really cool and unique way to get hands-on experience in the real world. Uh, we also have a lot of labs and studios available on campus for you to get that real-world application as well. Uh, and there is undergraduate research starting from day one. So Lawrence Tech by the numbers. So we actually have 3,000 total students, 2,000 of which are undergraduates and 1,000 of which are graduate students. We have 43 states as well as 48 countries represented, and we have an alumni network of 30,000 plus worldwide as well. What this kind of shows is that Lawrence Tech reaches a global market. The learning environment. So students are actually going to be admitted directly into their major, and you start taking courses within your major your first semester. Uh, so you don't have to wait two or three years just to start taking courses within your major, you can actually start taking those from day one and you can be ready for internships early on as well. Uh, the courses themselves, they're gonna be taught by faculty only. So you're not gonna have like a teaching assistant teaching a course, it's just gonna be a faculty member. Uh, we have an 11 to one student to faculty ratio as well. So you get really good one-on-one -on -one personalized time with your professors. Uh, you're not just another face in the crowd essentially. We do also have an honors program that is available and we have service learning as well as study abroad and service abroad opportunities that are available as well. What this slide is gonna show you is when we say we're a small university and we have small classes, it means that we have small classes. You're not gonna find any sort of lecture hall, 100 student classes. Uh, the average class sizes are about 15 to 20 students. And you can see on the screen, the largest class that you're even ever gonna have if you are an engineering student, it's gonna be 24. If you're say a architecture and design student, it's gonna be around 20. Uh, so you're never gonna be stuck in a giant lecture hall you're gonna have good classroom experience uh, with one-on-one -on -one things with your professors. Additionally, when you come to Lawrence Tech, you're gonna be given a laptop. That laptop comes pre-downloaded with top line software and they actually reach out to businesses to see what they're using. That way, you know you're using industry ready software. Uh, it's based off what major you're looking to go into or which college you're going into. So we have the College of Architecture and Design, the College of Arts and Sciences, College of Business and IT, and the College of Engineering. And your software is gonna be based off what you're gonna be learning. So for example, the College of Architecture and Design, you're gonna have your AutoCAD architecture, Adobe CCE, your After Effects, Google SketchUp Pro. Arts and Sciences are gonna have your After Effects, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign. Uh, business and IT will have your Microsoft Office, Simulate, Minitab. And Engineering is gonna have your AutoCAD, Katia, Maple, MathCAD, and SolidWorks. Uh, all that you're gonna to have to do to get this laptop is you put down a deposit that you'll get back at the point of graduation, uh, and there's also a help desk that is available on campus. Say something breaks, something happens to this laptop, they're gonna be there to fix it for you. If they can't fix it for you, they actually swap it out for you. Uh, so it's a really cool program that, that, that we have here at Lawrence Tech. So I kind of mentioned the four colleges that we do have here. So I'm gonna break them down now. Uh, we have the College of Architecture and Design, the College of Arts and Sciences, the College of Business and IT, as well as the College of Engineering. Uh, within the College of Ar Architecture and Design, it's actually the largest architecture program in the state of Michigan, and 50% of the licensed architects in the state graduated from Lawrence Tech as well. Uh, you're going to see two stars. What that's going to indicate throughout this slide is that it's a direct entry master's program. So in five years, you can graduate with both a bachelor's and master's degree with architecture. Uh, we do also have various designs that are available at the bachelor's level as well, uh, such as game, graphic, industrial, interior, and transportation design. 
And we do have master's programs available in interior design and social practice as well. Moving on to the College of Arts and Sciences, uh, we actually have multiple majors that are available within the College of Arts and Sciences, such as biology, chemistry, uh, physics, psychology, but you can notice that we also have other things that are available as well. We have the direct entry master's program within computer science. There are multiple concentrations that are available, including game software development, scientific software development, and software engineering. Uh, so there are a lot of ways for you to study computer science within the College of Arts and Sciences. We do also have a nursing program. So if you're interested in nursing, it's actually a really cool thing that they have. They actually do their rotating clinicals through 11 different locations through Ascension Health. So you get really good hands-on experience in the nursing program. Uh, we do also have associates programs available, uh, such as general studies in radio and TV broadcasting. We have pre-professional programs that are available. So if you're looking to go in any sort of dental law or medical school, we do have pre-dental, pre-law and pre-medical. And then as I had mentioned, we do have a master's program in computer science as well. Uh, moving on to the College of Business and IT. Uh, within the College of Business and IT, it is an AACSB accredited program. Uh, so within business administration, they have accounting, finance, general business, IT, and marketing. We also have information technology and business data analytics that is available as well. Uh, the College of Business and IT is AACSB accredited. It's really stringy accreditation that only 6% of business schools have actually achieved. Uh, on the right, you can see we do have master's programs that are available in business administration and information technology as well. Uh, moving on to the College of Engineering, we were actually founded as a College of Engineering back in 1932. So we've really been at the forefront in the leading the education of engineers for the past 80 years at this point. Uh, so you can see we have a long list of engineering programs available, such as uh, your civils, your mechanicals, your robotics. But we do have more exo exotic ways for you to study as well, like audio engineering technology, construction engineering technology management, uh, as well as mechanical manu manufacturing engineering technology as well. So there are a lot of really cool ways for you to study uh, engineering here. Additionally, we do have master's programs that are available as well. Uh, you can see the long list that are available. And then we do also have two doctoral programs that are available too. Uh, that's going to be your civil and your mechanical engineering. So moving forward to the uh, admissions process. The admissions process is very, very simple. All that you're going to do is go to the Lawrence Tech website and you'll submit your application. And then what we'll need you to submit will be your official high school transcripts. We are going to be test optional, but I do always recommend submitting your ACT or SAT scores because it's going to allow you to then um, maybe waive your placement assessments, but also be evaluated for various scholarships as well. Uh, they aren't mandatory to submit for scholarship. They can only help you and they're never going to hurt you. So if you have taken them, I do recommend sending those in and then a brief essay component that is available too. Uh, so once you submit all of that, what we're gonna do is we'll recalculate your grade point average using your core classes only. So that's gonna be like math, science, English, and social studies. And we, re we recalculate that on a four point scale. If you've taken any sort of advanced honors, AP or IB course, we give that an additional point towards your GPA. So the A would be treated as a 5.0 as opposed to the 4.0. Uh, we do also allow transfer credit as well. So if you've dual enrolled or if you're looking to come in as a transfer student, we do also have transfer guides that are available on our website as well. Uh, so once you do submit all of that, your next steps would be submitting your enrollment deposit, which will secure your scholarship, allow you for, to apply for university housing, additionally sign up for your virtual advising as well. So moving on to the total cost. Uh, so the total cost, it's based off 30 credit total and it does include your housing and meal plan. It's gonna be between about 46 to 48,000. Uh, but we do have really good scholarships to kind of eat into that as well. So in the upper left-hand corner, you can see that all admitted students for fall of 2021 are going to be automatically reviewed for a scholarship upon acceptance into LTU. Uh, pretty much what we're going to be looking at is going to be the rigor of your schedule as well as the grades as well. We do have a long list of other scholarships that you can see listed, which you can find in the upper right-hand corner at ltu.edu backslash scholarships. So I believe that's my time. So I'm just going to put this page right here. Uh, at ltu.edu backslash visit is where you can find all of our events and everything like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and pass it back to Jessica. Well, thank you so much. Next up is University of Scranton. Hello everyone. So I will be sharing my screen. Just give me a minute, please. All right, y'all, my name is Maria Ramos. I'm an admissions counselor for the University of Scranton. I also happen to be an alum, uh, class of 2021. I have a BA in strategic communications uh, with a track in public relations, and I'm also local uh, to Scranton. So I'm not gonna talk too much about myself, 
The University of Scranton is a Catholic Jesuit institution. We were founded in 1888. And in 1942, we became the 22nd Jesuit college in the United States. So what does that mean? It means that we base our education on Jesuit principles. Uh, so I like to talk about cura personalis. It means care of the being and uh, the principle of being men and women for and with others. Here at the university, we try to give students a holistic education. Uh, so that means we give them an experience that's wholesome and individualized and caters to the mind, body and spirit. So a few fun numbers about the university. Our first year class is generally a little bit under 1,000 students. Our overall uh, student population is about 4,000 students for what I like to call a big, small school. So it gives you that experience where you get to meet new people from different backgrounds. But at the same time, uh, you always have a friendly face in a crowd. Our 13 to 1 student to faculty ratio is also really nice. You get to meet your, uh, your professors on a personal level. Uh, our average class size is about 20 students, although we do have a hard cap at 35 students per classroom. Um, and I also like to throw in that generally the more specialized your classes get, so the further along in your college career that you get, the smaller your classes will get. I found this to be a really great experience during my time at the, uh, at the university. And so I kind of think that all those numbers are kind of encompassed in our first year retention rate. It is 89%. That is actually 10% higher than the national average. Uh, so I point this number out because it's important. It just points out how many of our first year students choose to continue their education uh, after completing their first year at our university. So if you are looking into majors and you're not quite sure what you want, but even if you are, we are not lacking in options. We have 69 different majors, uh, 50 minors. Uh, we also offer a pre-health and pre-law advisory program. So pre-health is pretty general. If you want to go to medical school, maybe you want to be a dentist or an orthodontist, or you want to be a veterinarian, that would all be under pre-health. Pre-law is pretty self-explanatory, I think. Uh, we also offer faculty student research programs. I think this is really great because it's not just uh, limited to our science majors. It is all across the board. Um, and it's really nice to be able to walk out with that published work under your belt. It gives you a really great competitive edge uh, once you're applying for jobs. Uh, we also offer accelerated graduate programs. Just an example would be our five-year MBA. Again, just another little nice competitive edge that you would get under your belt um, once you graduate. And um, our 69 majors are encompassed in our three colleges. We have our Punis College of Professional Studies. Um, and that just encompasses more of our helping careers. Uh, so teaching or OT, PT, nursing, counseling would all be in there. We have our Kanya School of Management, that is our business school, and we have our colleges of the arts and sciences, and now that would be our technology, our sciences, and our liberal arts programs. So we are ranked amongst the top 20 best college dorms by the Princeton Review. Uh, we offer a ton of great student support networks here on campus. So we have uh, free and confidential counseling services. We have our residence life office that helps both resident and commuter students kind of get through that transitional period of coming to college as a first year student. Uh, we also have our Center for Teaching and Learning Excellence, um, and that would help students with tutoring. Maybe you need help uh, with an essay. Maybe you need help interpreting some text that you're reading. Or if you have a learning disability, they are also a really great support to those students. Uh, we offer four years of guaranteed housing here at the university. Um, so during your first two years, if you are not within commuting distance, you are required to live on campus. But even past those two years, more than 60% of our students choose to stay in our residence halls, if that says anything about our living conditions here. Um, and during your first two years, you are also offered light housekeeping. That just means our maintenance staff will come in, you know, vacuum, sweep up a little bit, take out the trash for you, which I think, again, is a really great uh, transitional help for students who are becoming uh, independent adults. Getting involved in campus is super easy. We offer over, over 80 clubs and organizations on campus, and we have over 900 events per school year. Uh, we are not a suitcase school. Personally, when I was a student, I would spend our, I would get to campus at around 7, 8 a.m., and I would not leave till midnight just because I always had something to do on campus. Uh, so maybe if you're more leaning towards educational type clubs, every single one of our majors does have an affiliate link to it. But if you want to do more leisurely clubs, totally cool too. We have have gaming clubs, we have knitting clubs, all really fun and easy to be a part of. So if you're into sports, we are a Division Three landmark conference school. We offer 23 different sports for men and women. 
Um, if it is something you're interested, I highly recommend reaching out to our coaches. They would be more than happy to help. Or of course you could reach out to our admissions office. If you're not into the commitment of a D3 sport, that's totally fine. We also offer club sports and intramural sports. And you didn't hear it from me, but they are probably our most cutthroat sports on campus. They are really fun. I did fencing when I was a student and I never imagined myself doing fencing in college. But again, it just kind of shows you how easy it is to get involved. So jumping into our application process, this is what our typical accepted student profile looks like. We are currently test optional with the minimum GPA of 2.95. However, I do recommend sending in your scores if you think that they would be beneficial to your application, um, especially if you want to apply to a few of our more competitive programs like OT, PT, and nursing, uh, just because they do have a limited amount of seats. But I also like to talk about how we have a really holistic process with our applications. Your numbers are important, of course. We know that you, know, you studied hard for them, but we also want to get to know you as an individual. So when you are applying for the school, it's really easy, pretty straightforward, just on the common app, absolutely free. You need your high school transcript, the scores if you have them. Um, you would need minimum one council recommendation, although I like to point out that if you have more, send them in. We want to hear about you. And then we also uh, would like to hear about any activities you uh, participate in, any leadership roles you've been in, or community service that you've done. So a few important numbers to remember for the, uh, for the university. I like to say, remember the number 15. Uh, November 15 is our early, app, um, early action application deadline. Um, it is non-binding. And what's really nice about this is that we do not reject students if they apply early uh, action. They are simply deferred. So it gives you time to strengthen your application if you would like to apply again. December 15 is generally when you would start hearing back about early action uh, applications. That is also when we start to review regular decision applications. Um, March 1st is when we prefer for students to send in their applications by, and May 1st is National Decision Day. So for financial aid, we have merit-based scholarships and need-based scholarships. For our merit-based scholarships, um, this is just a few of the requirements we have, so top 40% of the class, minimum 2.95 GPA, um, or the four, uh, off the 4.0 scale. Um, if that's not what your school does and you guys do out of 100 scale, that's totally fine. You could send them in just like that. Uh, we will uh, transfer those numbers into what they're supposed to be. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, the scores, again, if you have them and you think they're good for your application, send them in. Uh, we do offer scholarships throughout all four years. And what's really great is that when you apply, I like to call it the Oprah Winfrey philosophy, we automatically review you for scholarships. So you don't have to worry about that. It's really nice if you do the early action, December 15, kind of like a little early Christmas present, you already know what you're going to get. And it really takes a little bit of stress off your shoulders. So for need-based financial aid, really straightforward, really easy, just do FAFSA, and that is it. Uh, generally, we like for students to apply between October and February. Um, the earlier you get it, the earlier you hear back. Usually students who apply in October hear back by January 15th. I think that gives students a nice little pocket of time if they do early admissions. Um, you know, December, or December 15th, they hear back. January 15th, they hear from FAFSA. Gives them plenty of time to make a decision about whether the University of Scranton is the right fit for them. So that's where I will be wrapping it up. Currently, we do offer campus visits, uh, virtual visits, and we have two open houses coming up this autumn. I will be putting my contact info in the chat, as well as a link to see that, and I will now pass it off to Jessica. Oh, thank you. That was great, the Oprah Winfrey method. I like that. Okay, so next up, we have St. Joseph's University. Hello, how are you doing today? I'm just gonna share my screen. Okay, so my name is James Jackson. I'm from St. Joseph's University. Like the University of Scranton, we are located in Pennsylvania and also like the University of Scranton, we are a Jesuit university. So a little, little bit of background, let me back up a little bit. A little bit of background about us. We are a Jesuit university, very similar to Scranton, except for we're located in Philadelphia, commonly known as the city of brotherly love. Um, and I like to add in for the ladies and sisterly affection. Um, the good thing is that Philadelphia is a wonderful city that is full of history, it's full of culture, it's full of art, and it is also the second largest city on the East Coast. Um, as a Jesuit institution, we believe in a liberal arts holistic education that's anchored in intellectual rigor, reflection, and social justice. The good thing is that we're a mid-sized school, so we have about 4,100 undergraduate students. They represent 50 states, 
43 countries, and 14% of our student population are first generation students. That means that neither their parent um, or their grandparents have gone on to a, have re obtained a bachelor's degree or higher. We also are happy to say that we have 22% of our students are students of color. So although we are a predominantly considered a predominantly white institution, we have made strides for diversity and we want not only to diversify our student body, but also for them to feel included. Um, as a result, our for this year, the for the first time in our school's history, we have elected a black student body, um, student senate president. Um, her name is Taylor Stokes, and she is a wonderful addition um, to the administration as the voice of the students. And so we are moving forward and she is very, very involved with inclusion and diversity efforts on campus. And she wants to see St. Joe's grow as well as do the faculty and staff. So St. Joe's, we're divided into three schools. So we have the College of Arts and Sciences. So this houses all of our art, science, natural science, social science, humanities, computer science, and math programs. So if you're interested in things such as biology, physics, if you're interested in things such as sociology, criminal justice, or psychology, you will be a part of the College of Arts and Sciences. We also have the Hobbs School of Business, which houses all of our business programs. So there are programs such as risk management and insurance, food marketing, business analytics and intelligence, finance and accounting with a plethora of others. So if you're interested in any of our business programs, you would be a part of the Hobbs School of Business. And we lastly have the School of Health Studies and Education. These houses all of our education programs. So if you're interested in being a teacher, whether it be primary school or high school, um, it also houses our Autism Behavioral Studies program. So that includes the one of two program like programs in the country. So Autism Behavioral Studies in connection with our Kinney Center for Autism Education and Support, as well as our interdisciplinary health services major, which if you're interested in going to any type of pre-med or pre-health program, that is very helpful for you. We are major blind in our admission process. So you can apply to under any major. And if you're admitted to the university as of now, you will be able to have access to any program that we offer at the university. The good thing is that, excuse me, let me go back. The good thing about this is that not only do you have access to this, um, the major that you want to major in, but you have access to the other schools. You're not stuck in a school. And so a lot of times you'll see students who will have a major in one school and a minor in others, or even do a double major in two different schools. You're not stuck to one school. And with our general education program, which is a part of our liberal arts experience at St. Joe's, you will most more than likely be taking courses in more than one school anyway. Also, we are test optional. I'll kind of explain a little bit more about this as we go on through the presentation. So we've been test optional since prior to the pandemic. So we know we have a history of it. We know how to fairly evaluate students irrespective of their test scores. We just look at them for the rest of the required information that is on their applications. And some good news is that we will be merging in June 2022, we'll be merging with the University of Sciences. Um, they are an institution here in Philadelphia that will become St. Joseph's University. They currently have the oldest school of pharmacy in the country on their campus. So that will bring into us schools such as pharmacy, as well as programs like physical and occupational therapy and physician assistance, where you can go into a lot of the pre-health advising programs. So we don't want students who are just going to come to school and just, you know, go into their dorm room and that's all you hear of them. We want students to be involved on campus and be a part of the campus culture and climate. We have more than 90 plus student clubs organizations. Those range from leadership organizations like our student senate, which I mentioned before, to our entertainment and um, art organizations like Followed by a Bear, which is our um, on-campus improv group, as well as our City Bells, which is one of our uh, all-female acapella groups, to our intramural and club sports. So anything from three-on-three -three basketball, to soccer, to Gaelic football. We also have a host of affinity groups. So those include like our Black Student Union, our Asian Student Association, and Bridging the Gap, which is a multicultural organization that does different types of programming, dealing with helping to bring everyone together and everyone feel included. We also have a, our Pride organization and our Center for Inclusion and Diversity, which is a safe space for um, our students, also includes a Pride Lounge for our LGBTQ plus students. 
Um, we also have our division one schools. So we have 20 division one teams. We have 10 male teams and 10 female teams. Our most well-known sports are our basketball, our um, lacrosse, our field hockey, and our rowing teams. And about 87% of our students participate in some form of experiential learning opportunities, whether that be going to an internship, doing study abroad opportunities, or participating in a business co-op opportunity as well. And so not only do we want you to be successful here on campus, we want you to be successful once you graduate. So we're happy to say that 92% of our students who graduated in 2020 at the height of a pandemic, 92%, um, were either in graduate school, full-time employment, or in a full-time volunteer program within six months of graduation. So students were still getting hired. Usually this number is higher, but because of the pandemic, it is at 92%. I myself am surprised that it's still above 90. So that says something to our wonderful career development center that helps students to find jobs, as well as our pre-professional advising programs and our co-op and internship opportunities. So we would like you to apply to the university. Um, and so we have a variety of ways that you can submit an application. You can submit an application through the common application or the St. Joseph's University application. We have no preference. Um, both of them have a required personal essay that you must submit. You also, we also require you to submit your official high school transcript, as well as at least one letter of recommendation, preferably from your teacher or your school counselor. If you have a coach or a work supervisor or a mentor that you would like to submit a um, letter of recommendation, that is fine also, but we do require at least one of those letters of recommendation come from your teacher or your counselor. Like I stated before, we are SAT and ACT test optional. So this essentially means if you don't feel like your test scores reflect who you are as a student, you do not have to submit those test scores. You will not be penalized if you choose not to submit those test scores and you will still be considered for merit scholarships if you choose not to submit your test scores. Again, we know how to accurately and fairly help students and evaluate students to know if they are prepared for the rigor of St. Joe's. We also require your resume. And if you would like to set up and schedule an interview with your admission counselor, you can go to our website at sju.edu slash admission, and you can schedule an online virtual interview with whomever your admission counselor may be. And so we have a variety of ways that you can apply as well. So those ways include our early decision one and early action, early decision two, and regular decision. So our early decision one and early action applications are due by November 15th. If you apply by that date, you'll be notified by December 20th. Early decision two is if you apply by January 15th, you'll be notified by February 15th. And regular decision is if you apply by February 1st, you'll be notified by March 15th. For early decision one and two, those are binding commitments. So those are for students who know that St. Joe's is their number one, and they are making a commitment to apply if they are admitted. Um, and that is my time. But if you have any questions, this is our admitted student profile. And if you have any additional questions, please contact me at my email, jjackson at sju.edu. Thank you, Jessica. All right, thank you, thank you. Um, so now I would love to have all of our panelists come back on the screen with their cameras on to answer some questions kind of in a round table discussion. And we're gonna go in the same order that we presented. So the first question I have for you is what advice would you give someone going through the college application process? Good question. So I think my biggest advice that I always give to my students is to ask questions. Like I know that seems very broad, but even the tiniest question can literally change your entire decision. I had a dream school. What literally started it for me was just asking if I could bring my car on campus and it all went downhill from there. So literally any questions that you have, just please let us know. Yeah, and then going off that, I think visiting campuses is another big thing that you can do. Uh, that's really how you know it's gonna be a good fit for you. It's actually getting on the campus, kind of getting a feel for the environment you know getting to meet some of the students that are working in the admissions office and things like that uh, that's kind of one of the biggest things that i always really do suggest students to do i think another really great thing is to not be afraid of not knowing things uh college is a really scary process you know you're changing and you're becoming independent um so it's natural for you not to know everything and to have a few questions about things uh, i highly recommend you know doing your research about colleges and of course not being afraid to ask questions and my last, my bit of advice is relax. <laughs> Don't stress yourself out. 
Don't worry yourself to death. Enjoy your senior year, but relax. It will happen for you when it's time for it to happen for you. But being anxious about it does nothing but makes you worried and makes you pull your hair out. It makes you great early like I did, it did me. So relax, know that you'll be okay. And don't be afraid to ask for help. Absolutely, nobody wants those grades, I tell you. Um, okay, the next question. What's one thing you want students to remember about your school, same order? Oh, this is such a hard question. I think the one thing I would want for you guys to remember is that if you come to DePaul, Chicago is, the back, is your backyard. That means not only do you have all these network opportunities, you have all these internship job opportunities, and it's just such a great city for you to be a college student. Again, third largest um, city in the nation, like Chicago is going to hold all your hopes and dreams. Um, and just you're going to have a lot of fun during college here, too. Yeah, very similarly, being in Detroit, we're in a really good area for engineers and architects, you know, there's a lot of those uh, STEM areas around here with the big three and everything like that. Uh, so we have that there, but we also are a small university, so you can also build a really good relationship with people here as well. So there are so many opportunities for you to kind of build yourself currently, but also in the future as well. Uh, pretty much, it seems like LT is just this small world that expands way beyond it somehow. And that's something that really we do hold near to our hearts. So this may seem a little silly, but I bring it up because everyone eats. The University of Scranton is ranked number seven nationally for best campus food. So you may not be thinking about this. You know, you're thinking about my SAT scores or what's my personal statement like? Did I get enough recommendations? But you have to think you're going to be eating every day. I like to just put out there, we have Chick-fil-A, we have Starbucks. I think they're pretty essential to the college experience. But yeah, I think that's something that a lot of students get excited about. I can pick, they do have good food, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, <laughs> I have five words. The hawk will never die. Don't know what it means, look it up. Oh, okay. All right, so the last question for the evening, um, what is one myth you'd like to debunk about the college admission process? Oh my God, I didn't even think about this one. Um, I think one myth I would like to debunk is there's no such thing as getting in contact with your admission counselor too much. This whole process, like you're gonna have a million questions, like I said, and that's my number one advice. Like, you're gonna have a lot of questions, but I always get students who feel bad because they think they're bothering me or bothering us in general. And there's no such thing because, you know, although we would like you for you to go to our prospective school, we want you to go to the best school that fits you, right? So there's no such thing as like ever getting in contact with us too much. And we just love talking as you guys can probably tell. So always reach out. Yeah, so I don't know if this is a myth or not, but uh, it's the statement of, oh, I'll just have my mom do that. I'll have my dad do that. Um, you know, we, we want, your parents can always be a lifeline, but this is a situation where you can go out and learn a lot about yourself and learn things. So I think just kind of learning how to be a little bit independent and going out and finding a lot of that information on your own. Uh, that's probably one of the bigger things that, I don't know if that's technically a myth, but a suggestion. So I know that test scores are really important to students, but I would kind of like to debunk the idea that numbers are the only thing that matters during your application process, because that is absolutely not true. Uh, colleges, you are rep a representative of the college you go to, you know, so colleges want to get to know who you are as a person, you know, what you do outside of school, um, you know, what your interests are. So I really want students to, you know, be open with their admissions counselors. Don't be afraid of asking a million questions. We want to hear those questions. We want to be there to help you uh, because we know that it's a difficult time in your life. You know, it could be a little scary. It could be a little challenging um, and we want to help you through it. And my myth that I would like to debunk are twofold. There's no such thing as the perfect student. And there's no such thing as the perfect college or university. You gotta go with what's the best fit for you, what works for you, what helps you um, financially, academically, and socially is a good fit for you. And don't worry about like certain things. If you, you had a rocky start to high school, just let us know why and, and show that you have growth. 
but there's no such thing as a perfect student and there's no such thing as a perfect institution. Well, students and families and counselors, I hope you were taking notes. They dropped some nuggets of wisdom tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, when you close this window, there'll be a link to a very quick five question survey. We'd love to hear your feedback. We encourage you to, to check the schedule to sign up for more sessions. There's another one after this one, but also on Saturday, there's panels um, and another college fair. So you'll be able to find this session recording as well as others at strivescan.com forward slash crystal dash ray. Thank you so much. Have a good night.